Good morning, lifers. Day three on the shoulder project. Hopefully, we'll get them done. I a, actually four, but I didn't work on them on day two because I was waiting for I had to get a hinges. So, day three on the shoulder project. I got to take them all back off, clean them, paint them, you know, sand them, you know. They're not done, done. I mean, they're working, but they need to be finished. I am going to have to put a weather stripping on them, so I really need to paint the outside surface. It needs paint anyway to stand up to the sun. Stain is not enough. It can be stained on the inside, but they go, you know, I don't know. I'm looking at it different ways. I could just paint them gray and blend them right in. You mark them all, take them off, paint them, let them dry. They'll dry pretty quick out here and get them back up and get them weather stripped and carry on in here because there's a couple other things that have to happen in here before I get moved out of the RV. I have to rebuild the door. I didn't do a good job on it. I'm not great at doors. I'll admit it, I'm, I'm just not great at doors. It's out, but my cuts aren't clean enough to when I butt two things together, they don't come together at 90. They sometimes go a different, so the door is kind of, you got to pull it. So, so I got to rebuild the door. I went ahead and take most of it apart and pull the foam off. So we're going to pull the shutters, mark the shutters, paint the shutters. Let's get to work. Still the one that's outside, I gotta do I have to do it later. There's not enough room here to put them all on. I don't want to put them outside because they would dry way too fast. There's a couple reasons. I wanted these on the inside. Besides the fact, when the storms come up out here, they come up pretty darn quick and pretty hard. I don't want to run around outside and have to worry about closing all these shutters up in a storm. That's no fun. I want to walk around calmly inside and close the shutters up. So that's a good reason to have them inside, or at least controllable from inside. However, if they were outside, this is the high desert, we get hours and hours and hours of direct sunlight all day, every day. During the summer, it's 110 plus every day. This wood, even painted and covered, would last a few months and I'd be repainting it every five or six months. It would warp rather quickly. It wouldn't last long at all out there in the sun. In here, it's protected from the sun. I'm still gonna paint them and everything, but it'll last years in here. Whereas if it was outside, I doubt it would stay good for a year. So that's another good reason to have them inside. Here's the best reason to have them inside. All the light that comes in, sunlight is direct heat. And I want to go get a piece of the foam that has a mirror on it and show you what I'm talking about. All right, I'm going to take this piece of foam, I'm going to put it outside and hold it in the same position as it would be if it was this shutter outside. Right about here, and you know, as, as the sun tracks through the day, it goes back and forth. I don't see the same thing on everyone. If 
this was outside, it would be reflecting the sunlight directly in and, and, and heating up the roof. It is so much cooler in here than it is out there. It's an amazing temperature difference. This is on the inside, it's blasting the sun right back out the wind. Well, it's, it's so hot right here. The, the, the amazing, the temperature difference between here and here. Because right here, I'm in between the sun coming in and the sun getting blasted right back out instead of it coming in. So there's three really good reasons to have these on the inside. And I think the most important one, you know, besides strength and longevity and ease to put it together, it, the most important one is reflecting the sun. I don't want to reflect the sun in. I want to reflect the sun out, but I want to let the wind come in and sweep through here. So this is really the best option. And like I said, they're eight bucks each. By the time I get done, it's not even a hundred dollar job to put shutters on all these windows. So, hey, that's a good deal. It's 79, 80 degrees in here and at least 90 or more outside. There's at least a 10 degree temperature difference just because of the design in here. So I'm really thrilled with this so far. I'm really, really happy. Hey, good morning, lifers. Uh, it's time for a new segment. Da -da. It's called Cooking with Dutch. Da -da -da. My name is not Dutch. Dutch is the Dutch oven. It's cooking with Dutch because we'll be cooking in a Dutch oven. Yes, I know this is Overkill. There's also a really cool robot, Overkill. Now you see me burn paper and trash in here. I don't burn plastic, but I will burn paper in it. But I also bump all that ash out into the cement. Because hey, if the Romans can use ash for cement, so can I. I don't normally use this instant light charcoal. This is the last of it. This bag actually came with the RV when I bought the RV a year and a half ago. Wait, I bought it the day the lockdown started. We just had the lockdown anniversary, so it's been just over a year. This bag of charcoal came with the RV just over a year ago. All right, we're gonna let that go. We're gonna make meatloaf. And I make a delicious three meat meatloaf. I'll tell you, you gotta have ground beef ground turkey, and ground hot sausage. You can use Italian, but I like hot Italian sausage. I like hot sausage. So you take normally a pound of each, but I'm one guy and I'm out here by myself, so I'm only doing half pounds. I divide everything down to, actually I divide things to a quarter pound when I separate things for the freezer, because I'm by myself. But I, I took it out yesterday, I thawed a half pound of ground beef, a half pound of ground turkey, and a half pound of ground spicy sausage. So I'm gonna mix all that up. We'll get the spices and everything and have some fun putting that together. And then we're gonna put it all in the Dutch oven with some uh, potatoes. So we can have baked potatoes and meatloaf. And this is, this is an easy meal to do when you're camping because you can mix the meatloaf up ahead of time and throw it in a baggie and throw it in the freezer and have this frozen block of uncooked meatloaf in the freezer. And then when it's time to cook, because your potatoes take an hour to cook anyway. You're gonna have to cook for an hour. You might as well cook that meatloaf fresh. Take a frozen block, pull it out of the Ziploc bag, throw it in the Dutch oven with the potatoes and it, everything flavors each other up. We'll get to that in a minute, but right now we're just gonna get the fire going. All right, here's our little selection here. Spices, you can go right down. We got garlic, crushed red pepper, Applewood rub, oregano, Italian seasoning, and brown sugar. It's not a really complicated recipe. I like the applewood rub because it gives it a kind of a bacony taste to it. We got an egg, we got some breadcrumbs, but just not quite breadcrumbs yet. I saved the ends off my toast, off my bread. Nobody likes to eat the ends. Turn that into breadcrumbs. Good cup, push them up. Big ones. Uh, 
that's how you make bread crumbs out of the end of the bread. Now I made some caramelized onions that, you know, the caramelizing onions, you just, they almost got a little overcooked because I was doing some other stuff. We got some fresh onions, some caramelized onions, some shredded cheese. Got all my meats in here. Go ahead and dump all that in there. Get all the big bread crumbs out. I don't need big ones. Little ones. Dump all those in there. I already washed my hands once, but I'm going to wash them again here before I get too silly. This is a lemon salt. It gives it a little extra poppiness. And, you know, you know, I'm very technical with my measurements. I just go down the line and put your seasonings to taste however you like them. I like a lot of Italian, and this one's about empty, so... Don't like a lot of oregano, just a little bit of it in there for flavor, and a little more. A lot, a lot of the apple. I really like this stuff. Crushed red pepper. I like it spicy. And some garlic. There's my garlic spoon. Big old help of garlic there. Almost did another one. Wash my hands real quick. You really kind of want wet hands for this anyway. Sticks less. Mix it all up. I really prefer larger chunks of cheese, but the shredded cheese, which I hardly ever buy pre-shredded cheese anyway, the pre-shredded cheese was on sale. I got like five packs of it. It worked. This is, I only use one egg, and this is still just a little wet, but that's fine because it'll stick together good. Because it's only a pound and a half of meat. It's not a full three pounds. If you're making a full three pounds, you want two eggs. Oh, it smells so good. The RV smells amazing because I was caramelizing the onions in there. And that big blob of congealed meat there. You don't want to leave raw meat on your hands. Now oh, those coals are really kicking right now. They're, they're perfect. They're almost a little too perfect, but they're perfect. I want to go grab a couple of potatoes and throw them in some aluminum foil. I mean, everybody knows how to you bake potato. You take a potato and you put it in aluminum foil. So I'm going to do it. Go grab those real quick, and then we'll go open up the Dutch oven and put everything together. All right, we got our baked potatoes here. Now I already stabbed them a couple times with a knife. A little bit of oil on there. Get that oil all over the skin. See, I'm kind of, if you can watch what I'm doing, it's... There we go. Roll it around in there, get that stuff everywhere. Garlic. Never have too much garlic. Pop some of that rough pink Himalayan lemon salt in there. We got potatoes good to go. And you want a, a good lean meat for the beef for your meatloaf so it doesn't shrink too much. It's gonna shrink a little. You know. And, I'm not a big chemical guy, so you're never going to see me spraying my stuff down with anti-stick. It's beef. It's, it's ground beef. It's going to put out a lot of grease on its own. It doesn't need any help being greasy. And 
that pretty look at that. Oh, you can't see it. Ha ha ha. See? It's in there nicely. Now you don't have to carry glass if you go on camping. One of those little foil ones or something. Alright, now Dutch oven. Oh, we forgot one thing. Almost forgot the most important part. Can't have me loaf it up sauce. This is sriracha ketchup. I like it spicy. Brown sugar, we got our garlic spoon here. Don't want to contaminate the sugar with the garlic. Nice big generous, like a tablespoon there. Another one of those things where if it was doing a big meatloaf, you'd do twice as much ketchup and then two big tablespoons of brown sugar. But that's it, that's the whole sauce. Ketchup and brown sugar. And this makes uh, such an amazing simple sauce. And it's, it's so, it's awesome. Tangy and it's sweet at the same time. Then make sure you break up all the brown sugar blocks. There's one right there you got away from me. The big rocks here. Look at that delicious sauce all over the place. Amazing! Delicious, amazing. Alright. By the sun, it feels like a little after four, somewhere around four. Middle, put it on each side. Cooking with Dutchie! Tell you what, that looks so good. I cannot wait for this to be done, and it's going to be like an hour. Oh, yeah. The trick here is going to have the right amount of coals on top and on bottom. See, that's almost a little too done, but it's perfect. Go ahead. As you pick them up, you can shake the ash off of them. Ash is an insulator. You don't want a big layer of ash on the, on the top of your Dutch oven. You want a nice pile of hot charcoal. Now, this is a meatloaf. It's going to take a while to cook and it's going to take some heat. I hope I put enough charcoal in there. It's Kind of a just bare minimum, I think. I might actually throw a couple more hunks on there. I'm going to take a little more out and put a little more in. The good thing is that the Dutch oven's a little smell. Be real quick here because there's a lot of heat right here. Get up. Get on the fire and get the handle out of the way. Now you just gotta leave it set. It's, it's gonna be a little while for that's done, another hour at least, probably 45 minutes before I even look at it. You don't want to open it. When you open it, you lose the heat. You know it ain't gonna be done in 30 minutes. There ain't no sense in looking in there in 30 minutes. 45 minutes before I even open it up. I'm gonna take a, piece, a little loaf of Italian bread out of the freezer and make some garlic bread to go with this because it deserves it. And while it's cooking, we'll get that done and take care of a couple other things. I'll see you in a few. All right, five o'clock. Oh, baby, look at that. Look at it just 
sizzling away. Whoop! <laughs> You're just sizzling away in there. It's looking beautiful. I'm going to put the lid back on, let it cook a little while longer. Check that out, isn't that beautiful? Oh, that fresh garlic bread. Can you see that lovely? That beautiful. Seriously, look at that. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Big slab of butter. Just potatoes, because that meatloaf has got plenty of going on its own. There it is, folks. Oh, wait. Piece of this beautiful. Oh man, look at that. Gordon Ramsay, eat your heart out. Cooking with Dutch. <laughs> I'm gonna go enjoy this amazing looking meal. I'm gonna cover this mouth real quick. I'm out of here.